Welcome to church. 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 Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Hope and Anchor Community Church. We hope that you've had a great week and that you've been joining in with all of our online initiatives. Now, before we get started into today's service, why don't we check out some testimonies from people who've been encouraged by what's going on here in London. Hi, Hope Anchor. This is Jeremy. Just want to say thanks for letting me check in the last few weeks. Uh, it's been really good and biblical teachings, and I really appreciate that. Uh, thanks for allowing me to join in. Thank you so much for sharing your testimony. And if you have a testimony that you would like to share about how our services have encouraged you, then why don't you send us a message to see how you can be a part of it. And now, why don't we all stand up and join together for some worship. There's a grace when the heart is at the fire Another way when the walls are closing in When I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire Standing next to me, there was another in the waters, calling back the seas. Should I ever need reminded of how I've been set free? There is a cross that bears the burden, where another died for me. There is another in the fire.
Amen, amen, amen. Thank you again for that amazing worship time. What a consistency. That's actually a fruit of the Spirit, to be consistent, to be loving, to be serving in a consistent fashion. Thank you so much. And also thank you for the testimony. 
What an amazing testimony. Now, let's just jump straight into the Word. But before that, let's just pray. Spirit of the living God, thank you, Father, for another day, for another moment that we have the privilege to face you face to face and really ask from you, to plead from your heart, Father, what we know you want to give us. That is your Word. Father, your living water, Father. Father, we submit everything in our minds and our hearts, Father, to who you are and to know who you are. Father, have your way in each one of us, in every fiber, in every memory, in every area of our hearts. Father, have your way. Saturate us with your glory, with your anointing, and we will be made new. We will be made new. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Today I want to talk about something that has been a bit of a journey this week between me and God. And I have been asking God some questions, you know, to see how, how he perceives things. But before I spoil it, I want to give you a little bit of background, a little bit of backbone into it. And uh, hopefully we'll end up understanding what God wants us to do. I'm very encouraged. I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit right now. There where you are, the presence is just right there, saturating your atmosphere. And I'm excited and I'm happy and I'm really willing to go all the way so we all get what God wants us to get out of this. He is so invested into this moment, and I'm hoping we all are in the same page. Legacy. Last week, as we were talking, I felt the Holy Spirit when He pushed me in that direction, and it was one of those good moments that you feel. There was something that kept titling, you know, it kept beaming in my heart since that same moment, and it has not left me the rest of the week. Here we are a week later, and I, I really believe that the Lord has been dealing with me and, and really leading me into understanding why that moment stayed with me. I said that we had the legacy of fathers in the faith and we were, we were talking about Paul and the way that he would think and the way that he moved and we were talking about Philippi and how he invested so much that the first church in Europe and actually through that, through the world, was invested, was planted and it was, it was actually nourished by God. And, and that word legacy, we had the legacy of Paul, of our fathers in the faith, of our elders in the faith that are, in the Bible we have many, and we were talking linearly about, about Paul. So that's why probably it stayed with my heart. And I start asking God, legacy, legacy. What do you have for us in this thing? And, and as I've been studying this week and I have been praying and asking God what he has, I've been asking God, what, what is it that you want? I got to say that legacy is a very interesting factor in each one of our lives. All of us, each one of us has a legacy, a spiritual legacy a moral legacy, a physical legacy. If a doctor has, has found a problem in you, they will ask you, do you know of anyone else in your family? And in the same way, if it's real in the body, it must be more than real in the spirit because we know that everything that is physical is sustained by the spirit. We have a legacy, everyone has one. And that actually marks our lives. That marks everything we do. It binds us to a story. It binds us to a beginning that we didn't start, by the way. But it also identifies us with what we are going to do. It identifies us with a style of doing things maybe as individuals and also collectively. We all have a legacy. As we, as we think about legacy, we will have to say that legacy manifests itself, it is influence, and it dictates factors in our lives. When we talk about manifest, how it manifests in our lives, it will manifest through our cultures or our mindsets, the way that we think, the way that we, we understand information, emotional, spiritual, and physical information. It will manifest itself through those things. It also will be influenced by the climate. We can see that the, picture, the people that actually come from countries that are hot weathered and cold weathered are very different. We can see that our legacy is influenced from where we come from, but also wars. And if we talk about wars, we can talk about history. History and the wounds of war would actually define legacy in many countries, in many families. Maybe that's your story. Maybe that's my story. My grandfather has been into several wars. My brother has gone into war as well. It has defined a legacy among us, in us. And we got to be real about this. Victories and hardships also are part of that influence of legacy over us. The victories of the past, it doesn't matter if it's yours personally, 
or of a family member, someone that came before you, another generation, the victories that they have will define how you live and where you live most of the time. And also the hardships, the wounds, the things that were not there, what was not sufficient, what were they not able to do, what they were not able to conquer, those things will still be in your pores if we are real. If we're able to observe this from a vulnerable point of view, it also dictates the way we celebrate. Not only the way we celebrate, but what we celebrate. And it's important that we see that legacy will dictate a rhythm in our lives. It will dictate a rhythm of what we value. During the week, as I was preparing for, for this moment together, I take it very serious. I'm asking God, Every week, what do you have for us? I take it very seriously. It is my privilege. I count it my privilege to be able to stand in front of you today as right now. And I feel the Holy Spirit just really pressing in. I feel that the anointing of God is bringing something fresh among us and into your life as well. And as I was seeking God during the week, I was asking God, legacy, legacy, legacy. I was trying to understand his heart for this time together right now. And um, I walked into a shop of a friend and uh, he closed the shop behind, behind me. He just keeps it like that. We're trying to play safe with the two meter rule and so on like that, but he wanted to talk to me. And we have talked several times. He's, he's not a believer yet, and, um, and, but we have that kind of conversation. We have that kind of chemistry and he wanted to know my perspective. We have talked about several things in life. So he knew that he could count on me having a good conversation with him and he needed someone to talk. He didn't have anyone to talk in that moment. Maybe that's you. Maybe you're needing someone to talk with you. But that's not the point of the story. As we continue, he said, he explained to me he was having problems with his wife. And to make it, to round it up and not lose time in this, he explained that he was having problems with his wife because he just discovered that he was like almost worshiping the legacy of his parents and the way that they would do things the way that they would think, the way that they would manifest love, the way that they would understand life. He was, he was so tied up by that legacy that bound him, that we saw that legacy will bind us and, and will teach us how to live. He was so bound up to that that he forgot he had made his own family. And his wife was not happy. His wife was not having it. And in that moment, he felt compressed because during this time that we all have taken a step back and reframed and have, have thought about how we are doing in life, he was seeing how he had not loved his wife a proper way, in the, in the way that he thought she deserved even. And he didn't know how to explain that to his wife. So he wanted to know, you know, from man to man, from a husband to a husband, how we, how we would go about. And I said, man, we gotta be vulnerable. We gotta explain that we, we didn't know better, but now we see. That's the redemption that Christ brings into us. And that's the conversation that I want to have. Every conversation, I want to bring the legacy of grace that God has invested in me because God has been so graceful. He has been so full of mercy with me that when someone wants to be vulnerable, the spirit of the living God will go through us and inhabit a conversation trying to say, hey, I am here. My grace is sufficient. Follow me. God is the great husband. God is that man that knows how to treat each one of us. As we develop the conversation, he said, is that it's like this legacy is like a chain to me. And, and in that moment, when he used those two words, it really, it really catapulted me into a different place, a different conversation with God. We finished that conversation. He was glad. His life is getting sorted. God is doing amazing things in his marriage. And God is bringing his truth in the midst of ideas that have not helped them to be one. Like God wants us to be with each one of our husbands or wives. It depends on who you are. But the Lord was bringing something new. And he wanted to explain what is the true legacy. A legacy of chains. Today, the topic of today. And we're going to go under the banner, chains of glory. And we're going to go into several places in, in the Bible. And uh, I want us to stay input into this. I really want us to stay connected because I believe that God has something new. And why? Today, nowadays in Christendom, in, in the life of a Christian, we, we love our posters. We love our Pinterest. We love our Insta post. We love, we love, we love. We love to be, be 
be just loving. We love that love. That we love that gap that leads us to be ah uh, feeling like there's nothing wrong with our lives. But is these leading us to maturity? The more I see so many posts that don't confront, but they kind of sugarcoat life. The more I'm worried for us as a generation of believers. I believe that the platforms are a very a very big blessing, but I see that many people are using them in their human strength. We love. We love words. We love songs. We love to sing about how God frees us from from the legacies and the chains. But, but true or not, we gotta ask: Is this a complete? Story. I believe this is really good. I believe that is it is a really good thing to understand that God is the chain breaker, the history maker, and we could start singing. Don't make me sing now. Don't look at me like that. But we gotta understand that this is not the complete story. We long for freedom. We long for freedom because we know God is freedom, and we long for God. Everything inside of us longs for God. But do we have the freedom that He wants, or is it a superficial freedom? How does this tie up? Legacy, chains, freedom. How does this tie up? Because we're living in in human tailored, humanistic freedoms most of the time. Society and everything around is providing for us excuses instead of confrontation that brings growth. Today we are we are maybe part of a generation of believers of wannabe disciples that are longing to see the real God that we serve, but we still have sugar coatings all over the place. We want to experience freedom, but we have to put up with feeling free in the surface. Maybe a surface freedom will be a selfish freedom, will be a very vain freedom, will be a freedom that will not really catapult me into following the plans. And really fulfilling the goals that God has for my life in this season, we gotta understand that God is the God of my chains. Chains are in the Bible in many ways. Chains are chains, and they are very emblematic in the Bible. We see them in many moments. They are they're signifying different things. So most of us would look at chains, and if you're from my generation and we're quite rebellious, we will actually defend from that word with everything we got. You cannot chain me down. You cannot stop me. You're not going to be able to tell me what to do or not to do. But God can. And in this moment, I believe the word of the Lord is coming today for us to understand that chains are chains. Although chains will have different types, chains are chains. Different types of legacy, different types of chains. In the Bible, we see that in the priest's life, they will they will fasten a plate. Um, they will fast the fasting uh, like a breastplate that was full of stones, signifying the different tribes of Israel. They will fasten it up with chains. But also in history, we could see how a prince would decorate his life, his neck, you know, his his wrist, his 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 wardrobe with chains, chains of gold, chains that would mean honor, that would depict status in his life. He would say to everyone, I am the prince or maybe the princess. We also can see that in history, prisoners have used shackles that have been tied by chains. Chains in this moment has been used to bound them and constrain them for what was theirs, true freedom. And maybe as a system of condemnation, Also, we can see that in history, prostitutes have loose and, and have tied chains into their ankles just to say, identify themselves in front of society. Chains are a very, very important thing in everyone's life today. It's not minute, the influence that he has. In life, chains are chains and we all have some. But what kind of chains do we have? Where is the chains from where are the legacy that we have from what it celebrates what does it celebrate what identifies us with today in this moment we can stop and say what is my chains influenced by are my chains from god are my chains from the world are the chains from the flesh are, are those generational chains that are not a blessing or those are generational chains of trust and empowerment that lead me to advocate for the truth and the gospel that lives in me. I am part of that family. What chains do we have? What chains live in us? What are the chains? What are we tied to? 
We love stories like we see in Acts, in the Bible, in, in Acts chapter 12, 6 to 7. And we're going to read it really quick. This is not the point, but it serves us to lead us in the direction that God wants. It says in verse 6, says, The night the hero was bringing him to trial. Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and sentries stood guard at the stands, at the entrance, sorry. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quickly, get up, he said, and the chains fell off Peter's wrist. This, the context of this story in the Bible, it was the, the early church. It was an immature, undeveloped church. And I believe in this moment, in this season, we, we have been very developed by God. As generations of blessing have washed over us and generations of treatment and knowledge of God has washed over us, what do we have to serve in our table today? The context of this story, when they didn't know that God would do so amazing things around the world in history, like we already know, they were there praying for Peter. The church was praying for Peter and Peter himself, he was sleeping. And we love these kind of stories. But what if... What if is our chains were brought into the scene by God? What if your chains were given by God to you? But I thought God is the chain breaker. I thought he was the miracle maker. I thought that he's the one that delivers his people. And yes, that's true. But as we mature in life, as our relationship, as the church matures with our God, we got to be exposed we want to we wanna push ourselves to be exposed to a fuller, a deeper understanding of His grace. What if God is the one that put us in chains? What are you going to do? What to do now? If God is the one that has chained you down to something that feels less than favorable. I know we're going to lose clicks right now and it's okay, but I'd rather play myself for the word of the Lord than to popularity because that's a very different chain. I'd rather be chained to observation and to obedience than to be observed by others like popular. I want to know the truth of God. Would we still love Him and honor Him if we found ourselves knowing that we were chained down by God? In the context of this, we're talking about Paul being chained on a chamber. And chambers in that day didn't look like the Hilton. It didn't look like the prisons. Now, look, I've been in prison to visit people and I've seen the conditions of prison. And they're not the best, but they're definitely better than the prisons that Paul was experimenting and experiencing with. In the book of Philippians, I see a very, very awesome story, a very deep story of the love that Paul has for Christ and how he has seen his situation through the eyes with the perspective of Christ in his life. Verse 12 of chapter 1 in Philippians says like this, Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, belonging, I belong to you, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear. I can see it now. Throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and there. All the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. What an amazing moment that we can see that the power of God is able to lift the perspective of Paul to understand that the chains that are tying him down are not tying him to a cell, into a difficult moment or situation in his life. They're tying him to Christ. Those are the chains of Christ. It allows him to have a perspective upon the situation that is superior to what his feelings will dictate. Apparently, he was able to see as, oh, he has served as a stage. Use your chains as a stage. Christ in this season gives you the authority to you and to me to use our chains as a stage. And he also would serve for others, for many, for many more to become confident. Like Paul says in verse 14, he says, and because of my chains... 
most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord, not in me, in the Lord, and there all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. This is the moment we see the chains that are heavenly upon our life. Now we start seeing that there's some chains in our life that have not been of justice, that have not been, that have been desired by God for our lives. But there's some others that He Himself, as our Lord, if we consider ourselves His servants, if we consider ourselves His followers, He will place in us because those chains will catapult the life of many to know that we are there for Him and He will bring confidence, a confidence that multiplies. It says that many of the brothers and sisters have become confident. It multiplies. My chains will multiply confidence in other believers. The grace that I receive multiply my confidence in my friend's life, in your life. What chains in your life God is using to really convey His confidence, His life, His spirit through your life in the life of many. What do you have to say about your chains? Are you grateful? For your chains. Can we have that spirit of Paul saying, I can see it now. It was clearly something from God. Have we taken the time to see that he actually would advance the kingdom if we held high our chains, saying, Hey, I've been tied by Christ into this grace, into this mercy? We see in Romans in chapter 1, verse 1, it says that Paul, a slave of Jesus Christ, called as an apostle and single out for God's good news. And in verse 2 says, which he promised long ago through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Paul saw himself as a slave. He had fought to be in that place. He wanted to go to Rome. His heart was for the Gentiles. He knew that he was a slave, that his chains were tied up into the heart of God. He had known the Lord. He had known the Lord in his weakness, in his, in his blindness. He had known the Lord. And because of that, he knew a grace that was more than sufficient. He would complain every now and then like you and me about the things that we are enslaved into. But we know that the Paul that we see in the Bible was able to reconcile that. And that anointing is in our lives. We can reconcile where we're standing today. There's more than the grace that we need available. God is all graceful for us. And in that moment, we see that he called himself a slave. I want to be known by people as a slave of Jesus Christ. I don't know what it would take. He was called an apostle, and he was also called someone that was singled out for God's good news. I believe that the chains that are in our lives there are chains that reveal the good news. Every chain that you see that God is not taking away from your life, everything that he has maintained there, there has to be a reason. Let's go deeper into his presence, understanding that there's a reason. And that reason is to reveal the good news of Jesus Christ through our life. Those are chains that deliver the promise. It says that is, it is verse 2 says, which he promised long ago. He was separated, single out by God, God's good news, which he promised long ago to his prophets and in the Holy Scriptures. Our chains, like in Paul's life, would actually not only bring revelation of the good news and reveals them to the people, but also form part of the delivery of the promises of God for his people, for the people that he has selected before the start of the world. My chains speech confidence. It speak, speak about being revealing the word of God. It speaks about to be able to deliver the promise, not only for my life. My chains deliver the promise for generations. In Ephesians 6, 19, 22, to 22 say like this, and pray on my behalf, Paul being very vulnerable, but still very bold, that utterance may be given to me in the opening, Ephesians 6, 19 to 22 says like this, and pray on my behalf, that utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth when I declare it, to make known with boldness, the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. What a declaration that in proclaiming it, that speaking it out, that preaching it out, it may speak boldly as I ought to speak. But that you also know, on top of that, 
that you also may know about my circumstances. This is not how it looks. This is a lot difficult. How I'm doing. Ticius, the beloved brother and faithful minister of the Lord, will make everything known to you. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, that so you may know about us and that he may comfort your heart. The chains of this ambassador of heaven will bring comfort to generations. And through us, those chains live on. We are a church that has, has chains that have tied us to a grace that will bring comfort to others. The things that we have lived, those things are still tied to us, not as that weight, but weight of glory. Kava, the word kava actually means the weight of glory. And we are here as a church standing in strength today, knowing that we have been tied up to something bigger, something more than what we could do. That death has no sting on us. That God has defeated death in our past, but he has tied us down to a grace, to a mercy that cannot be defeated. It is the mercy and the grace that lived in Christ that lives in each one of us. Those are the chains that live in us. It's not only the confidence, it's not only the comfort, but it's also that confidence that comes from knowing that we are delivering the promise that was long before given through the prophets and through the scriptures. We know that we reveal the good news, the chains of comfort for many. So God wants us to be used. And when he wants us to be used mightily, he will chain us down. He will put us into chains. He will give us a strategy, a stage in the midst of the situation. He will give us the type of chains that will reveal his glory. He's giving us the promise of God to reveal to the people through the chains that we have in our lives. What chains have you despised? What chains do you have in your life? You say, what, what is the day? God, when is it that I'm going to overcome this? And God is still saying to you, my grace is sufficient. What are the chains in your life that God is wanting to say, hey, I have kept you in that place that it doesn't feel comfortable to you because I want to use you to bring comfort to many, to bring comfort to the heart of the people that I love. Are you so in love with me that I'm going to be able to chain you down and use you as a promise to the people to deliver the promise to the people? Our chains will reveal the glory of God himself in due season. If people around you don't recognize the glory of God in the chains that you have, do not lose hope, do not lose strength. You don't live in for the multitude of people. You live for the faithful of one, the one and only that is faithful to the end. In due season, they will understand that your chains are the chains of grace, that your chains are the chains of mercy, that your chains are the chains of faith, that your chains are the chains of of truth that your chains are the chains of Christ. They are the chains that manifest his person, his his character. They are the chains that really influence the hearts of many towards him and dictate a rhythm in the place that you live. Your chains are pivotal and are transcendental. They are needed. We need you in the game. We need your chains. We don't only want the things that look good. We want your hardships. We want your wars. We want the things that you live. We need all those wounds surrender to the blood and the chains of Christ in our life. Because that blood won over the chains that held us in the past and chained us into eternity, into history making people. He made us a church that is in power, that is not stopped by a flu, by pandemics, by people, by uncertainty, by injustice. We are not changed to the past. We are a church that can glorify God in the moment, in the present and beyond. We multiply the confidence. We multiply the comfort. We multiply the grace. Today, I think has been a very strong message of God. And I believe that God is wanting us to understand that he has chained us and he has kept us through the chains of glory. Before we close, I don't want to finish this moment without giving you an opportunity. Maybe you have stepped away from a grace in your life. Maybe you have stepped away from living life through Christ and you you are trying to understand that you have a vocation, that God has not despised you, that he forgives you, that he holds you out in his hand and that he's able to shelter you and nourish you and bring you back into the former glory and even beyond. 
Maybe if you're in that place and you have not made a decision for Christ, you can do it today. And as we pray, we can pray together like this. Father Jesus, thank you for your forgiveness. I surrender my, my sins. I give you my life. And I acknowledge you like my Lord and my Savior. Have your way in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray like that, I want to not only congratulate you, because that's what a real person with real chains would do. And when we do this kind of prayer, we know that the Spirit of God not only comes into our life, but it starts setting up an atmosphere that will deliver us from the chains of the past. And it will tie you down through the grace and the trust and the mercies that are new for you every day, day in and day out, for you to see your life in victory, in a victory that is beyond your situations, like in the life of Paul. If you are a Christian and you have been walking in faith and you still have moments in your life that you don't feel comfortable, that you don't feel that you, you are having or experimenting the freedom of Christ, that you feel that you have reached a stop, that your life with Christ is not growing, this is the day that the Lord has made. Today, we want to know, we want to remind us as a church, as a family all around the world that God is for us and that He has dictated our freedom He's, he's the God that stands before us and He's the one that defends us. Then he, when He ties us down with these chains of grace, with these chains of glory, it's for us to be strong and courageous. And there's strength coming into your spirit. There's strength coming into, through you, even your past right now, in through your body. There's healing happening right now in your house. As we talk in your heart, in your story, God is restoring unto you a freedom that is true. That has nothing to do with posters and nice cliches. But it has to do with a life that is submitted to Him and understand that it's loved. Today I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, restoring to my brother and to my sister, come for them in their heart, Father. Let them know that these chains have come for us to advance the gospel. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I declare peace and strength and virtue, Father, like never before, my brother and my sister. Father, have your way right there over their heart, Father, I pray. And Father, and lead us to a fuller understanding of these chains that you have us, like Paul would say, that we are slaved into you through these chains, these chains of glory. Thank you very much. Thank you for, for being, being a person that is vulnerable and declaring your heart to God like that. It really blesses all of us. When one of us declares our heart and our commitment to Christ, it really blesses the whole family in faith. Don't go away. There's more to come today. Hope Kids is preparing something amazing like always. I believe it is even longer today and your kids are going to love it. There's something here for all the family. Stay tuned at 430 Hope Kids are going to be there. You can find them during the week. Please click in and share with others if this has been a blessing. And we have a little announcement that I'm so glad. Um, and, and probably if you know me a little bit, you know how, how glad I am about this. In three more Sundays, Sunday 19th of July, we're coming back to our physical location. We have been given, we have ticked the boxes and we have been given the rights to go back and to be able to fellowship together and we are so excited. This is fresh news from today. And today we wanna say that we wanna hold it back. No, we wanna share it with everyone, share with everyone there where you are. Our online services are not gonna stop. We have several more Sundays that are gonna be exactly like this and through this, we're going we're gonna to see how God can do it when even we are in our physical location. But we are excited to share those good news with you. May God bless you. May He strengthen your heart. May He lift your head if you're weary. And He will strengthen you with His peace. And I love you and I bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.
Thank you again for joining us for this Sunday service. And make sure you stay connected throughout the week on all of our different online initiatives, from our online connect groups, our online workouts, and our Hope Kids program. And if you would like to donate to the mission that we have going on here in London, you can do so through the Tidely app or through our website, both linked below. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you real soon.